Dr. Kwesi Boche, the man whose sheer longevity at the Ministry of Finance occasioned a first name for him because in those days, everyone called him Finance Minister Kwesi Boche. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that this House do approve the financial policy of the government for the financial year 1994. This great man studied here at Presec Legon in his formative years. He may have walked through these gates once or twice or several times in those days. But Dr. Botry's real philosophy may have been developed during his university years and especially as a lecturer here at the old Faculty of Law at Legon. Kwesi read, taught, and instilled Marxist legal philosophy to those who would listen, especially students and his colleague lecturers. In those days, one of these doors would have been Kwesi Botry's office, shared probably with another lecturer in the same room or in another room. At that time, Kwesiboche belonged to the left side of the university's senior staff and he may have been in great company in those days for he had with him Akilak Pasoya, later to be Vice-Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Dr. Martin Ousu, the famed actor and teacher, Kwamina Ahoy, later to be Minister for Local Government, Modibo Okran, later to be Supreme Court Judge, and significantly, J.E.A. Mills, later to be Vice President and President, and if we talk about Kwesi's student days with his Marxism, of course, one of his great contemporaries would have been definitely Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, a colleague student who later became Attorney General, Foreign Minister, and now President of Ghana. All of these important men formed part of the university's socialist leftist thinking. But it must have been here in this house located just from the Balm Library down the roundabout and towards the Athletic Oval. It must have been here that Kwesiboche was won over to join the PNDC. So, whose house was that? This is the home, as it then was, of the Marxist law lecturer, the younger Chikata, Chachu. His older brother Fui, also a lecturer in law at the Faculty of Law, and their friend Evio Dankwa, and their uncle Kujo Chikata, who is the eternal Marxist, all may have come to this home to actively recruit for JJ and Captain Chikate's coup d'etat, or as they called it in those days, their revolution. Very dedicated, very honest, very distinguished Ghanaian. Became a leading political figure in our country. It was a very difficult period in the history of Ghana, but carried himself with great dignity and elegance. And I think that the outpouring of grief that there is in the nation today is a good testimony to how Ghanaians valued his contribution to the growth of our nation. I had the opportunity to talk to him quite recently. And it never occurred to me that we're going to be in this position. But that is what the Almighty has for each one of us. He has a time and a place to call us one by one. Fortunately, it's Kwesi Butri's time.
So this house has a lot of history. But why were the meetings in this house crucial to the formation of the PNDC and Kwesiboche's own participation in it? Just as D.F. Annan's book recounts on page 51 and 52. But before we go to the book, let's understand what were the ideological differences that competed for the soul of the PNDC. First, it was the left-left on one side that included Kwesiboche and Chachu Chikata and the June 4 movement on the other side. They were made up of soldiers and pragmatists who were also very thirsty for what they called justice. Justice against politicians. And yet, among the PNDC, there was the UP group from the United Party. Most of them were quite calm at the beginning of the PNDC. They included P.V. Obing, Justice D.F. Anand himself, Dr. Obed Asamoa, Alhaji Mahama Idrisu, Mr. A. A. Munufie, to mention but a few. So all of this ideological competition was going on in the mind and the soul of the PNDC and definitely in the mind and the soul of the PNDC chairman, Flight Lieutenant Rawlings, as he then was. Let's get back to Justice D.F. Annan's book, page 51 and 52, in a book that is written actually by Kwame Na Ahoy and Nana Atudazi, two key players of the whole PNDC episode. Justice Annan's book begins on page 51 by describing who were the new democratic movement, the NDM, and it's as follows. He says, The new democratic movement, made up largely of academics drawn from the University of Ghana, was at one time quite dominant. It appeared to be in charge of the PNDC's political orientation. Some of its members were Dr. Kwesi Boche, later to be appointed PNDC Secretary for Finance, who still remains Ghana's longest-serving finance minister. Also included Professor Akila Pasoya, who became the leader of the PNDC team for the Valco negotiations and later became Vice-Chancellor of the University of Ghana and who is also currently a member of the Council of State at the time the book was written. Mr. Kwame Kaikari, who was appointed PNDC Director General of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. This is Kwame Kaikari, who is also in charge of Media Foundation for West Africa. And then there was also Mr. Guzi Tano, later to form the National Reform Party and contest the 2000 presidential elections. And also Mr. E.T. Mensa, a University of Ghana staff member who was later to become Minister of Youth and Sports in the first and second governments of the Fourth Republic. So that was the NDM. Page 51 continues to tell an interesting story, and the last but one paragraph reads as follows. In subsequent ideological clashes with the elements from the June 4 movement, with a largely military and militant working class base, the June 4 movement was perceived to have the ear of Chairman Rawlings and appeared to have overcome the NDM ideologues. In the event, the radical ideological elements of the PNDC system were dropped in government reshuffles and moderate to middle elements were brought into the government, particularly in May 1983, obviously to change the political orientation of the PNDC. Unquote. The central issue from the quotation from page 51 of Justice D.F. Annan's book is that when it came to choosing the moderates in the ideological race, Dr. Kwesi Boche was thought to be one of them because quite clearly, the left wing lost the ideological battle of JJ's heart. But Kwesi Boche was retained in that mix and actually began to lead IMF negotiations. Now, how did this happen? Back to the book on page 52. So here goes the last paragraph of page 52. A series of meetings with the Kedah leadership and various consultations on the Revolutionary Front threw up the dire need for caution. Yet Finance Secretary Dr. Kwesi Boche, himself an NDM classic, along with other like-minded economic gurus, had to wrestle with the obvious choice. Jerry John Rawlins, as chairman of the PNDC and as a pragmatist with little fixed political positions, must have had little hesitation beyond the normal caution required in a journey into the unknown. Consultations with the Britain Woods Institution started on a very quiet note for obvious reasons. The revolutionary left, of which Kwesiboche was originally a member, reacted uneasily to the hobnobbing with the Britain Woods Institutions, which they believed to be the veritable bastions 
of the capitalist ideology. However, the larger interest of the country was paramount to Jerry Rawlings, who had little interest for the socialist ideological orientation of the Kwame Nkrumah era. In the ensuing conflict over the direction of economic policy, J.J. Rawlings and his core advisers outflanked a slow-footed and doubting PNDC and started a proper appeal to the larger Ghanaian populace. So, it was on this basis that the left-wing Leninist Dr. Kwisiboche was made to lead negotiations with the IMF at that time. Former Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Kwe, also captures the same story in his book on page 306 and 307 as follows. I quote, The New Democratic Movement, the NDM, sprang up from a group of Marxist-oriented intellectuals in the University of Ghana around 1980. They included Dr. Emmanuel Hansen, Mr. Chachu Chikata, Mr. Fui Chikata, Dr. Kwesi Boche, Mr. Kwame Nahoy, and Mr. Asiedu Reinchi. Though originally socialist in its orientation, the New Democratic Movement became the most supportive body when the PNDC battled with this extreme left to introduce the economic recovery program. It did not take long for J.J. Rawlings to cleverly take control of the NDM through the fluid maneuvers of the Chikates. It was at this juncture that the NDM turned to support the IMF Structural Adjustment Program which moved the PNDC towards the right. It is worthy to recollect that this NDM had condemned Dr. Liman's IMF policies and criticized the increase in petrol prices in 1980 as being, quote, lack of concern for the real suffering of our already impoverished people, unquote. So, for Professor Michael Kwe, the NDM, Kwesiboche's organization, was taken over by Flight Lieutenant Rollins through the fluid maneuverings of the Chikata brothers, Chachu, the younger Chikata, and Fui, the older Chikata, both of them lawyers, both of them law lecturers, both of them Marxist. So all of this will be the first part of Dr. Kwesiboche's political career in government. Very dedicated, very honest, very distinguished Ghanaian. Became a leading political figure in our country at a very difficult period in the history of Ghana, but carried himself with great dignity and elegance. And I think that the outpouring of grief that there is in the nation today is a good testimony to how Ghanaians valued his contribution to the growth of our nation. I had the opportunity to talk to him quite recently. And it never occurred to me that we're going to be in this position. But that is what the Almighty has for each one of us. He has a time and a place to call us one by one. Fortunately, it's Kwesi Butri's time. How did Kwesiboche then leave government? In 1995, as Minister for Finance and Economic Planning, Kwesiboche was responsible for promulgating the value-added tax system. It was a new tax policy that actually drew out hundreds and thousands of Ghanaians in protest under a famed Kumi Preko matches that turned the stability of the country on that day upside down. 
Kusi Boche spoke to the Associated Press about his views on the matter. And the point is that the VAT replaced a sales tax law that was narrower in its coverage and which also before the 1995 budget was at 15 percent. So uh, we are reviewing the situation with a view to accommodating some of the concerns, uh, correcting some of the unintended uh, uh, side effects of the VAT, uh, but we will do so in ways that don't prejudice the uh, stability of the macroeconomic environment. But the ramifications of the demonstration was so devastating that Kwesiboche's position almost became untenable. But the real story about Kwesiboche's exit is still up in the air. A lot of the rumors pointed to a fractious relationship between Kwesiboche, guess who, and Chachu Chikata, the same man whose house he had been, the same man who he had formed and worked with under the NDM, the same man who had had the socialist and Leninist and Marxist ideological conversations with, and the same man who actually really took him into the PNDC. It was widely reported in those days by the Ghanaian Chronicle and other newspapers that Dr. Boche had insisted that the expenditure of the organization that Chachuchi Kata led, the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, the GMPC, should come within the ambit and context and supervision of the Ministry of Finance. It appeared that Chachuchi Kata was not quite happy with that and you can understand because in those days, Ghana was up in oil exploration business. The GMPC were sure that they could find oil and they spent a lot of money exploring. Flight Lieutenant Rawlings was concerned about the closeness to our oil find and therefore supported GMPC. Dr. Boche did not like that. He wanted the accounting to be transparent. It is widely reported and widely believed that this is the reason why Kwesi Boche was shown the door in the PNDC. Before Kwesi Boche had been shown the door, another very powerful PNDC name from the UP stock, PV Obi, had been shown the door earlier. It was widely believed that PV must have fallen out with JJ Rollins on his views about how the 1992 political system should be promulgated. It is believed that PV and Kwesi and others favored a political system that will have PV Obi run as prime minister, whilst Fly Lieutenant Rollins will be the executive president. As it turned out, JJ was not happy with that. He wanted an executive presidency where he will be president as we do have under the 1992 constitution. So PV was the first to go. Later on, Kwesi Boche also left. But right now, here in Ghana, we have lost all three men. First it was PV, next is President Rawlins, and now Kwesi Boche. Well, God knows best. But as they say, once a politician, always a politician. So after Kwesi Boche left government, he was elevated to the senior staff at the glorious Harvard University, where he taught for many years. But sometime in 2002, politics called again, and Kwesi Boche came back to Ghana to enter the race. Which race was that? It was the race to choose the NDC flag bearer for the 2004 elections. Professor Mills had been defeated in the 2000 elections, and there was another election. Some NDC people thought Professor Mills had lost the election because he lacked lustre and that Kwesi Boche was a better candidate. So Kwesi Boche came in to challenge J.A. Mills, but Kwesi has still fallen out with Rawlings. Rawlings threw his weight behind Professor Mills. Together with Mrs. Rawlings, they supported Professor Mills. A lot of the party members went behind Professor Mills and Dr. Boche was soundly beaten at the Congress that was held in Legon amidst a little bit of violence. But that was Kwesi's second incarnation into politics through the ballot box. It is widely believed that Kwesi Boche could have had a third incarnation into politics. But when did this occur? This, according to the story, occurred in 2012. It is said that when Professor Mills died, there were elements in the NDC who felt that John Dramani Mahama, the vice president of the day, was not particularly ready for presidency and that if the NDC should sustain and maintain power, they needed a Kwesi Boche to come in and deliver the election victory for the NDC. So some felt that the NDC should go to Congress, Kwesi Boche should present himself as the candidate, and he will be voted for and he will become the presidential candidate of the NDC in the elections that were six months away. The view that won the day anyway said that President Mahama has been well marketed, he's very well known, he's very well liked, and that the sympathy votes from the death of Professor Mills 
will inure to the benefit of the NDC only if it was John Dramani Mahama who was on the ballot. So that view won, and that ended Kwesiboche's third incarnation into elective politics. As fate would have it, President Mahama did win the election and appointed Dr. Kwesiboche as a chairman of Ghana Gas and later on also appointed him as a chairman of the NDPC. When Akufuado became president, Dr. Boche graciously handed over the portfolio at the National Development Planning Commission, the NDPC. After that, Kwesi has not been seen in public life except the last lecture he gave back at Legon, back at the Economics Department, where he discussed the state of the economy. Kwesi will go down as a very respected opinion in national politics. A very dedicated, a very honest, a very distinguished Ghanaian. Became a leading political figure in our country. It's a very difficult period in the history of Ghana. But carried himself with great dignity and elegance. And I think that the outpouring of grief that there is in the nation today is a good testimony to how Ghanaians valued his contribution to the growth of our nation. It's very sad to hear that Dr. Kwesiboche has passed to eternal glory. He did not leave us with a book. Most likely, he was writing. So we rely on the family to produce a book. Same situation occurred with Flight Lieutenant Rawlings. He left us very sad and without a book. On that note, congratulations to you, Dr. Obeda Samoa. He's left us with a book. Congratulations, Professor Michael Kwe. You've left us with a book. Congratulations, Mr. Kwame Ahoy. You have also left us with a book. I believe that Mr. Chikata and all the important people are writing a book. Rest in peace, Kwesi Boche, until we meet again. Thank <laughs> you.